Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a video. And today I'm back with a review show special. Not a review show special. Let's try that again. I'm back with a review show revisited. This is one of the most popular videos on the channel. I don't get a chance to do it every single week uh, just because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort to actually put this together. I've got to go out and get live performance footage on top of everything that I do. But we've got one for you this week. Now, what is a review show revisited? Well, the idea is very simple. We take tricks that we've reviewed on the review show and we perform them in the real world and let you know exactly how they work out in the real world. Because here's the thing, right? We're very proud of the fact here at Magic TV that myself and Ryland perform every single trick we review. And that's really important because I think as a reviewer, unless you've got to the point that you're happy performing it on camera, I don't think you can review it. I think it's very difficult to give something a review when and you're just paying it lip service. However, there's a world of difference between performing something in a static studio setup to your co-host and performing stone thing to live people in a real gigging situation. It tends to change your viewpoint on things. Sometimes you'll uh, you'll perform things that you thought were brilliant and ended up being not so good. Other times you'll perform things that are awesome and, uh, and, and you know, they'll, they'll end up being not so good. Other times you perform things that are terrible and, and they'll actually end up being okay. You know, it, it very much depends. So it's a very popular uh, video right here on Magic TV. Uh, can't wait for you guys to see this week. So here we go. Without further ado, let's get into this week's Review Show Revisited. So today, right now, the first trick we're going to be looking at is the Milk in Light Bulb by TCC. That's the Milk in Light Bulb by TCC. Uh, now, if you don't know what the Milk in Light Bulb is by TCC, we reviewed it very, very recently. It's a trick where basically um, uh, the milk vanishes and appears inside a light bulb. So you take a light bulb, you screw it into a lamp, you switch it on. Milk vanishes and appears inside the light bulb. We gave it a really good review. And in actual fact, on the review, we said that Ryland is actually going to start performing it in his new stage show. Well, guess what? He has been performing it in his new stage show. Uh, we're, I'm filming this in Blackpool. I'm filming this in the last day that we're here. We're going to be doing the final show tonight. Uh, Ryland's done eight shows back to back. This is show number eight. Uh, and he's performed the milk and light bulb in every single show. It's actually um, the trick that he does just before the finale. So he does this just before he does the finale. And um, I can't think of a better trick for the review show revisited because it's only just recently come out by TCC. We gave it a good review. We said it was good quality props. Uh, we said that the instructions were really good. We said it was well made. It actually comes in a really nice flight case. Everything comes self-contained. This is footage of Ryland performing it in his show. So you're going to see some footage of Ryland performing it in his show. Then I'll bring it back into the studio. I'll talk about exactly what I think. And then we'll do that footage again. We'll play that footage again with a commentary track over the top. But first of all, this is the Milk and Light Bulb uh, performed live on stage by Ryland at the House of Secrets. Now let me tell you a reason why I love magic. You see, it allows me to make the impossible possible. But to become a magician with a little thought, absolutely anything is possible. I'm always creating new tricks. When I have a new idea, it's like a light bulb going off in my head. Let me show you an example. This is a lamp. It's actually a lamp that's to keep by my bed at night. I brought it here to show you an idea that I had for a trick when I was going to bed last week. Like I said, getting an idea for a trick is like a light bulb shining brightly. This is the light bulb for the lamp. I'm going to put it back in there. Can everybody watch it carefully? Now, my favourite type of magic is when something vanishing from one place and makes you feel fears somewhere else. Let me show you what I mean. This is a yes, little yellow ball. I'm going to put it in this hand. Now don't think the water that's actually gone and jumped over to this hand. Now that's a great trick, but let's be honest, you and I both know that it's just sleight of hand and the hand moves faster than the eye. Imagine if we could do that same trick but something that I couldn't hide secretly in my hand. 
And if you could actually see the magnet that bolts from here to here, would that be good? Would that be amazing? Would that be awesome? You see, when I go to bed at night, my mum always gives me a glass of milk. Last week, when I was drinking my milk, I had a really great idea. Let me show you what it was. There you go, that's the Milk and Light Bulb. Now, when you hear the script uh, for Milk and Light Bulb, it's very much a, uh, it's very much written for a kid, right? You know, hey, when, you know, one thing I love about magic is, uh, you know, when I go to bed at night and I get a glass of milk, it, and, and I think that's important. I think that's one of the most important things, which is making sure that when you're performing, you tailor the trick to yourself. You know, I see so many people performing, whether it's on close up, whether it's on stage, and they perform and they just do it exactly the same way as everybody else. There's no variation, there's no change to that at all. One thing that Ryland did is him and I sat down and we scripted the whole thing and we made it all about Ryland being a kid and hey, let me tell you why I love magic. And, and his obvious passion for magic, I think, shines through in the performance. Uh, we said that we love the milk and uh, light bulb. It's a classic, it's been around for a very, very lo long time. Uh, and, and having now performed with it eight times here on the run in Blackpool, I can tell you it's a phenomenal prop. The quality is second to none. It's really well made. And you know what? Compared to a lot of stage props, it's very, very easy to set up. You know, we set it up in seconds. It's got a very quick, easy setup and it's reliable. I think that's the most important thing about this prop. It is absolutely reliable you need a trick when you're performing on stage and you're performing this sort of routine you want something that you just know is going to work and that's what you get with this you just know it's going to work every single time it's going to do exactly what you wanted it to do so we gave it 100 percent on the review show you know I, I i wholeheartedly agree with this i was speaking to ryland it's one of his favorite tricks in his show it's absolutely going to stay in his show he's going to be doing it in all of the shows he does moving forwards uh, and that's because it's great, you know what I mean? It's that, you know, we talk about this on the Hidden Gems, don't we? We talk about tricks that have been around for a long time and people dismiss them because they're so old. I mean, that's the perfect example of the milk and light bulb. It's been around for a very long time. And I think it's very cool that TCC have bought this prop bang up to date. Uh, everything is really well done about it. Everything is really well made. The flight case that it comes in, it's just obviously a lot of TLC has gone into this TCC prop. And I think all you need to do is stamp your own personality onto it. So absolutely passes the review show revisited. We're gonna roll that footage one more time with the commentary track over the top, and then we're gonna look at the second trick. Okay, so this is Ryland's Milk and Light Bulb performance. Now, the, the House of Secrets has got a very small stage. It's not the biggest stage in the in the uh, in the uh, world. Um, so we set the light stand up to the right on that small table over there, and uh, and and the milk is on the other table to the left. Now, I think that if there's one thing that you can learn from watching this video, well, there's a few different things. The first is the importance of having a script. I mean, I, I, scripting is so important anyway. Um, but this particular script, you know, it took us a long time. Myself and Ryan sat there for quite a while writing this script. We wanted it to be about him. Every routine that Ryan performs on stage has to be about him being a kid. 
And that's why the milk and light bulb was so appealing to Ryland's act, because he's talking about, hey, this is the lamp that I keep at my bedside. This is my bedside lamp. You know, when I go to bed at night, my mom gives me a glass of milk, all of this stuff. Now, you kind of have to have a premise for something like this. Milk vanishing and appearing in a light bulb is kind of a really weird thing to happen, right? So the route we went down with it is manipulating milk. You know, he does this very simple sponge ball vanish, which freaked people out. I don't know if you can hear the reaction to the sponge ball uh, vanish and reappearance, but it's a really strong moment. But then he kind of dismisses it and says, well, hey, it's sleight of hand. You know, wouldn't it be great if I could do this without actually, you know, have it with something that wouldn't hide in my hand? And that sets the premise for the actual routine. That sets the premise for the milk vanishing. Uh, and I think it's really important when you're constructing a stage routine, if you're doing something that's a little bit odd, like milk and light bulb, you have to have a reason for doing it. The other thing that I really want to point out here is music. You know, I mean, l l study Russ Stevens, study uh, Scott Alexander, study Mark Oberon. Anyone who understands musicality will understand the importance of having music over a stage piece and this is the perfect example when that music kicks in it really makes that moment of the milk vanishing from the uh, from the glass even stronger and i just love that moment that he looks over at the lamp and immediately the lamp goes off just the lamp boom goes off and then you have this wonderful moment at the end and the music kicks back in just as he uh, he pours the milk out of you know opening up the uh, opening up the light bulb and taking the glass and pouring the milk into the light bulb. It's a beautiful moment theatrically. Um, but really what makes it so strong is what we've done to get to that point, you know, in terms of the scripting of the routine and laying the premise and, you know, the, the use of the sponge ball to set the premise and justify the routine that he's going to do. All of this stuff is very important. So when you're putting a stage act together, um, you know, what we can learn from this, there's a few things we can learn from this, but one of the things is make it so that the, the, the piece that you're doing fits your personality. Ryland is a nine-year-old boy, so everything that he does in his act is all about being a nine-year-old boy, right? Um, that's very important, but uh, also understand the importance of musicality and, uh, you know, justifying something that might necessarily be a little bit odd otherwise. And there you go. That's the Milk and Light Bulb by TCC. So the second trick that we're going to be looking at today is the non-box. Now, the non-box is something that I've talked about a lot on this channel recently for a couple of different reasons. One, I think it's, it's the best coin box I've ever seen. Yes, it's very expensive. It's like $200, $250. It's not a cheap box by any stretch of the imagination. But for me, it's worth its weight in gold. I've been performing this more than pretty much any other coin trick I do. Just getting the handling down, just getting it exactly where I want it. Because when you start performing something in the real world, yes, it'll fool people. Yes, it'll go past people. But it's only after you've performed it a whole bunch that you start to get to a point that you're really happy with how the performance looks. And I'm kind of there with this now. I'm at a point where I'm really happy. Uh, and, and the routine that I'm doing, which is what you're gonna see in a little bit, uh, it starts clean, I just take it out of my pocket, it starts clean, it ends clean, it instantly resets, and there's lots of moments of magic, and there's a lot of magic that happens in the spectator's hands. Uh, there's a lot to like about this box. I gave it a great review before, I even did a mat test on it, and it passed the mat test, but now we're gonna take it out to real people. So this is me performing this at the House of Secrets. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're gonna do something with a box, a lid, and some points. Your job is to examine everything. Let's have a look at the box. Make sure there's no trap doors, no hidden compartments. Make sure it's well as fierce to be. Is that okay? Good stuff. And you can have a look at the lid as well if you want to. And the coins. Yeah, it's in there. Are they all okay? So, here's what we're going to do. I want you to watch very carefully. We're going to take the coins and pop them inside. The box, like this. Okay. That's fair, right? And I'm going to take the lid and pop the lid on. So the lid goes in front of everything. Now it's ruling magic, not to tell you what I'm going to do ahead of time. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the coins out of the box. Are you ready? 
what? Nothing's gonna happen to me. Oh my god! That's the coin tag, right? <laughs> should we do it again? There's a money rule in that because you should never repeat it. Should I'm gonna do it again for you. Watch. One, two, three, four. But this time I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. You know why? I'm actually gonna make the coins go through my hand. Put your hands together for me. Now, first of all, you know that this is solid. Uh, you know my hand's solid, right? Yeah. And you also know that the coins are solid and the box is solid because you've examined everything. Again, I'm not gonna do anything until you say go. Go. And that's when they go right through my hand. <laughs> that's it, look, you take the coins, put them in your box yourself. Is that fair? I was going to say, you hold on to the lid, I'm not even going to touch the lid. How's that? Okay. I'm not going to, which means that you're going to be able to see the coins the whole time, right? Yeah. And I'm still going to make the coins jump out of the box. What? You say what? Go! It's starting to get annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I tell you what, let's try and do it in reverse. I've got the coins here, and the lid goes on the box, right? Okay. And I'll try and do it in reverse. And what I mean by that, I'll try and get the coins into the box. So what I do is this. Oh, wow. <laughs> but for the big finish, I'm going to leave the coins in the box, right? Can you do me a favour? Can you hold your hand out for me? And go the hand lock. For the big finish, I'll get the coins back out again. Are you ready? Yes. Out of the box, without even touching the box. I'm going to get them out of the box. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow. I know it's really annoying. I don't understand. That is so good. <laughs> oh, thank you, genius. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so there you go, that's the performance of the non-box, and that's the routine that I've chosen to do with this. And one of the things that I really like about the non-box is everything is examinable. The Boston box is such a great trick. The Germain box is such a great trick. And the Akita box is such a great trick. But normally, if you want to do all three of them, you've got to carry three boxes around and you're going to switch them in and out and you're going to have to have a pocket full of stuff. With this, I just keep it in my ticket pocket. I bring it out. Everything's examinable. And I can have that box examined at any point that I want. All I have to do is push it into their hand and have it examined. And you'll notice I start off by making the coins come out of the box. Then I have them go through my hand. Then I give them the box and I say, put the coins in the box yourself. You couldn't do that with a normal Boston box. And then I put the lid to one side and I, uh, I do a phase for my German coin box routine, which again, you couldn't do unless you were using a non-box. The non-box is absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that I can get into it anytime I want to. I love the fact that I can have it examined at any point I want to. I love the fact that I can use it as a Boston box if I want. But if I don't want to use it as a Boston box and I want to do a normal Akita box routine, I can literally just leave that part of it away, bring it out, and I can do a normal Akita box routine. Then if I want to do it as, an, as, a, as a, a Boston box, I can add that. I love the fact that you've got the plug with it as well, so you can actually uh, have have that as a finale if you want to have that as a finale there's so many different options i genuinely think i said in the review that it's very expensive and it is very expensive however even though it's very expensive i i would highly recommend it to anybody who wants to do work with a coin box because it's you know i've worked with coin boxes for years but a lot of the time when I'm out and about, I don't take them with me. Um, I've even got some of the most expensive coin boxes you've ever seen from places like Copeland's Coins. And you know what? Those Copeland's Coin boxes are now pride of place right there on my display shelf in my office because the, the box that I'm taking out with me and gigging is the non-box. I'm even just about to buy a second one for Ryland so that I know because I know Ryland really wants one as well. So there you go. It's the non-box. It's absolutely amazing. Now, let's just have a quick look at that performance footage again. Um, but this time, what we'll do is uh, we'll put a commentary track over the top. Okay, so this is the non-box. And uh, although you can only see one spectator here, there's actually about three or four people watching me. 
One of the advantages for me of the non-box is having everything examined right at the very beginning. And I make a big deal that they can examine everything because, you know, frankly, this is the advantage. And one thing I'm trying to do, and I'm still working with this box all the time, but one way I've found that works the best is have them thoroughly examine the box first and then load the gimmick onto the box as they are examining everything else. Now, I've played around with various different uh, turnover moves. This seems to be the best turnover move from the non box because it's a very natural way of doing the turnover as you're reaching for the lid. Now, notice I look her directly in the eyes as I steal the coins. And that's a big piece of advice for any routine. If you're going to do a move, do it when they're not looking at the prop. Look at them, they'll look at you, and then you do the move. So, in the first phase, you set the premise. And notice that I shake the coins in my hand first of all. This is a way to build up reactions. When you're doing coin magic and coins clink, if you're making coins jump into the hand that aren't meant to be there, having them appear by them hearing it first and then showing them is always the better way of doing this. Now, the second phase, again, notice I do the move when I get her to do something. In this case, I'm getting her to cup her hands together. When she does that, that's when I do the move. Now, the advantage of the non-box is coming into play here because, as you can see, I'm showing the coins are in that box right up until the very last second, which you can't do with a normal Akito box. And then, just before the third phase, I'm handing her the box and I'm saying, hey, put the coins in your box yourself. Make sure that everything is as it appears to be. And again, you can't do that with a Boston box. This is why I love the non-box so much. I really do. It's why it's become something that I've been working with so much. Just because there is so much versatility. Now, in this case, I'm giving her the lid to, uh, to hold on to. And I'm using the non-box as kind of like a German box at this point, or a Germain box. Because I'm not using the lid. Now, one thing that I've found is I can actually do this in reverse relatively easily. And when I first started doing this, I was a little bit worried that if I vanished the coins and showed they were in the box, that people would want to pick up the box and check them. But because everything's been so free, you can see here, when I show that the coins have vanished and they've appeared inside the box, she doesn't have any inclination of wanting to look at those coins. She can see that they're there. She's examined everything. There's nothing untoward. Now, the final phase is, again, one of the reasons I love the box. She's convinced that the coins are in the box. I put the lid on, I steal the gimmick out, she's now just got a normal box in between her hands. But I've already got the coins in classic palm from the previous uh, phase, and I've stolen the gimmick away. So at the end, everything's in her hand, and everything is left to be examined. You don't have to switch anything out at this point. She's left with everything that she can examine. And the nice thing is, my uh, the gimmick's in the left-hand finger palm, so all I have to do is put the coins back inside the box, put the box onto the, uh, onto the gimmick, it loads it back into position, I put the box back in my pocket, and I'm reset, ready to go again. So, you know, such a versatile prop, such a really good prop, but if we're gonna learn one thing from this uh, particular video, it's the importance of doing the move when people aren't watching. That's the best time to do any move, when people aren't looking. Create an offbeat, and then do the move. It's the basics of misdirection. Okay, so the final routine we're going to be looking at today is going to be uh, the tic-tac trick that we reviewed recently on uh, the Craig and Ryan Review Show. And if you don't know what this is, it's a revelation of a card with a tic-tac box. So the whole idea is that you, uh, you have someone pick a card. They can pick any card they want to. You have a, uh, a, a box of Tic Tacs, which you can bring out and you can show to people. And you have them have a look at the Tic Tacs and then you shake them. And as you shake them, it actually, the Tic Tacs rearrange themselves into the card that the spectator is merely thinking of. We gave it a really great review on the Craig and Ryland Review Show. And we said that it's a very original presentation. Now you're gonna see Ryland performing this at the House of Secrets. Uh, Ryland has been doing this a lot. So at the House of Secrets, it is run here. It's been doing a stage show every night, but it's been doing about an hour and a half of close-up beforehand every day as well. Uh, and he's really been working this in. Uh, this footage is at the beginning of the week, but you'll get a chance to see exactly what it looks like. Uh, it's really strong. <laughs> it's a really strong routine. 
Um, and I'll tell you why it's really strong in a minute. But first of all, let's have a look at a performance of Ryland doing this trick with the Tic Tacs live at the House of Sydney. Okay, so here I have a pack of cards and I'm just going to mix the cards like this. Okay, so we've mixed the cards. Okay, so we've mixed the cards. Let's uh, we're going to cut the cards. Yep, cut the cards. I'm going to get you to pick a card, any card. Just stop. Ready? Stop. There, do you want now? Do you want to change? Uh, other one. Do you want to have that one? Okay, so the card memory, don't forget it. You got it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, now put it back. Put it back, like that. I'm going to put the cards there. Okay. Now, here I have some Tic Tacs. These Tic Tacs have been in here, in my pocket, the whole time. You see the Tic Tacs, lots of Tic Tacs. You want to see what they say? Does it say my diamonds? Oh my god, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow. That what yes. How? That's amazing. That's amazing, Marlon. So there you go. It's a really simple, really quick card revelation but it works really well. Now, Ryland was using a mem deck when he was doing that performance. So the reason for the full scuts and the full shuffles is he was trying to keep the deck in mem deck for a different routine he was going into later on. But you can do this with any regular deck of cards. You just need to make sure that you've got your force card on top and you're good to go. Now, one interesting thing that I found with this particular trick, um, in and I never anticipated this until I actually saw Ryland start performing it and I, before I had a go at it myself, is people don't necessarily straight away realize what's happened. So you have these Tic Tacs and you show them and they look at the Tic Tacs and when you shake them and the Tic Tacs have rearranged into the Seven of Diamonds, they don't notice that it says Seven of Diamonds. They just see Tic Tacs. And that's even stronger because when you shake it, you say, do you see what's happened? And they go, no. And you go, look closer. And when they realize what they're looking at, they're like, oh my God, it gets a really strong reaction because it's almost like it happens and the the, uh, the Tic Tacs morph before their eyes. It's a very slow motion revelation, which is really cool. Um, and I didn't expect that to be the case, but it actually is. And that makes it even stronger. Now, the one negative with these is that you can't actually do them. Uh, you can't actually, well, you can, but it's the same revolution every single time. It's always the seven of diamonds. So you need to bear that in mind. If you're doing multiple groups, you know, you might want to consider not doing this to every group unless they kind of don't know each other. Um, uh, but the people that make this, I would highly suggest, highly, highly, highly suggest that they actually go to the trouble of making maybe more Tic Tac boxes available with different card revelations. I think that would be a really smart thing to do. But as it stands, it's one that we gave a great review to in the uh, review show. And uh, rightfully so, it deserved the good review. This trick is absolutely brilliant. Love it. Let's wrap this up. Okay, so this is a very quick routine. And by the way, Ryland's dressed in a very strange T-shirt because he's performing this after he's actually finished the show. And that's one of the reveals in one of the routines he does in the show. And as I mentioned earlier on, he's doing some false cuts here, but that's just because he's using a mem deck and he was going to be going into some mem deck routines after this. So he wanted to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the deck was kept in the same order. Now, I want you to see the reactions, really. I mean, it's a very simple routine. Ryan's just done a riffle force, had the card shown, had the card put back, job done, deck gets put away, and then the focus is on the Tic Tacs. Um, notice he says, hey, who likes Tic Tacs? He brings the Tic Tacs out, shows them. Now, notice he shows the Tic Tacs, does the shake, and it's a little bit like a twirl change. And it takes a few seconds for them to realize what's actually happened here. It takes a few seconds for them to realize it. It's kind of like that internet thing where you see an image and you can't really see what they're talking about. And then when you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, very simple. Nothing really else to say about this. Other than notice he leaves the Tic Tacs down on the table. Um, it, it, the box can't really be examined. But notice... Nobody goes to pick it up. I mean, that guy there turns it around, but he's not turning it around 
to look at it. He doesn't think that there's any suspiciousness with that box at all. He's just turning it around so the person he's with can video it and get a better a video because, you know, for some reason, when Ryan is performing, they all want to video him. But, you know, and, and that's the one piece of advice I can give you on this. If you've got a prop and it can't be examined at the end of the routine, paint it red, you know, just put it down. If you don't show any importance to it, it's totally not an issue at all, as you can see in this video. Bottom line, this is a really strong trick that's really worth having in the repertoire of anybody. So there you go, guys. That's another review show revisited in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to know your thoughts. Have you bought any of these? Have you tried them out in the real world? How has it gone for you? Don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already done so, please go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. You can go check it out and, uh, yeah, go check it out and see what the fuss is about. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.